Today, boys and girls, we've got a bit of a treat, an exclusive interview with Daisy's map designer, Adam. A lot of you, if you've been on the scene long enough, may know him also by Sumrak, creator of Namowsk for Arma 2, one of my all-time favourite maps, and we've got a treat for you today, some spicy information. So with all that being said, let's get straight into this interview, and I hope you enjoy. Right, question one, how long have you worked for the Daisy dev team? So I started working for Daisy dev team, um, uh, well... It's like maybe five years ago, four years ago. I'm not exactly sure I was as external because by the time I was still attending college. So I did like smaller tasks of redesigning villages and like it will be three years now since I joined Daisy Dev team like on full time. So yeah, it's like five years maybe close to five years but yeah some of that time was actually like external cooperation only okay so you just did small tweaks and stuff and design externally for the first two years then three years on yeah the actual like team. smaller tasks like change this village and put these deer stands or uh feed checks for the animals and stuff like that okay, that there are of course like tasks you can do easily even if you are like an external and some tasks that are quite hard and like require the cooperation, close cooperation with the team. Question two, what do you do exactly as a map designer? So yeah, basically I'm taking care of the map. I am not alone, I have one other map designer besides me, but yeah, we are basically making sure the map looks and plays good. Uh, we are working closely with the design department, like Peter especially, and we are basically making sure that everything looks to the design too. Like we are making sure that the economy, that there is like there are appropriate buildings for economy to spawn, and yeah, basically <laughs> it's like we are putting buildings and trees and everything, and like making sure it looks nice and plays good. Yeah, you're saying about trees, actually. What? How hard was that to do those new trees? Because that looked really complicated. Yeah, we've got most of the stuff generated. It was just basically... I guess the hardest part on that was basically finding good, ba good balance between the performance and the visuals. Yeah. Well, it runs really well for, for me anyway at the, at the minute. And it looks natural, the trees. So... You, that was a really good job and, and really nice change as well because how many was there not many trees before that were different was there it was probably oh yeah yeah there, there have been a lot of new variations for each like species like guys in Bratislava did a good job with the models yeah it, I just can't help take a screenshot sometimes when I'm going through the woods I have to take a screenshot especially with somebody else running through the trees in front of me and then it just looks so good yeah I I like that too okay like in the single player with camera mode and increasing the view distance, putting fork in there, it's so nice. You will be able to do that too, once the modding is out. Oh yes, I'm going to play with the mod tools, definitely. Okay, what change are you most proud of that you have done to Chernerus Plus? Hmm, I would say it's the change to Northwest Airfield. Is this the new change that we haven't seen yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's teasing us now. Yeah, of course, like, the point six two update is really close to that, like, the whole change in the western border and, uh, like, complete swap of the forests is also very close to that. So Northwest Airfield will be the next step to that western change, or a part of it anyway, because I know you're getting the, the water, the water, the new running water going into the dried riverbeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are doing a lot of experiments with the water, like what we have seen is just like first prototype. We are, ha we are having like, we are investing more time to making sure they, that they, these streams and rivers look good. So we'll see about that. I, I cannot promise we will fill the whole map with them, but yeah, we will try our best. Oh yeah, you'd expect some dry kind of streams, just no water, um, but will we have sound effects? That's the important thing. Because oh, at the yeah, moment, yeah. we don't have sound effects, do we, for water at the minute? Not uh, at the coast, we do, but not rivers. Yeah, we are thinking about it. Like, it, we definitely 
we definitely have solution already for like uh, local sounds on objects so we can add sound to the like rocky areas where water flows through the rocks that's already possible with the since 6.1 like the arma 3 uh, eden sound engine but yeah for like the general sound for the river areas that's something we will have to implement probably if we like really take these rivers seriously we'll see yeah definitely i think with the the new rivers and the the improved rivers especially if with the flowing um sound effects would be a, a big improvement on top of that just to add that immersion and uh yeah. hearing those running streams would just be amazing like guys from the sound department really did quite a nice upgrade from the 6.2 uh, ambient sounds so you will see you will hear a lot of more sounds in the environment you probably seen the video in like the latest status report i think it was oh you yeah. seen like actual like sounds on the objects so when the wind blows you can like hear the cracks and stuff yeah the new sounds definitely sound good big improvement yeah, yeah. But it, it, it allows a lot of options how you add sounds into the environment yeah, it should offer a, a completely different experience, and that's just one element of what's coming with 6.3, so... Yep. Okay, question three. Since you joined the Daisy Dev team, had it changed how you looked at maps in any way? Since creating the mouse, say. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> did you, uh, did it make you, like, optimize maps more or anything like that? I mean, not that I had any problems running the mouse before, but... Did it, you took it more seriously on the map creation? Oh yeah, like... Learned I, new I, things? I learned a lot of new stuff <laughs> and like of course like my like my goal like how i imagine my map to look of course got higher like i expect better visual quality when i look on the numbers from arma 2 just <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing at the time though oh, oh so yeah. many memories from the mail i really wish i'd have recorded more footage i, I don't back in the day to be honest, I don't really understand why it got so popular, because <laughs> it's oh, still like Operation Flashpoint Island. <laughs> yeah, but it was just, I don't know, it was the, the the ambience. I don't know, did, did you add the sound effects into the mouse? Like, the, you had the slight kind of scream of children in the background, in the ambient sound. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah, 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 that, that kind of stuff just freaked people out. And the snow, the cold, and it was just completely different to anything else they'd played with Daisy, especially Daisy Mod. And it just offered the most, I think, different experience in Daisy Mod. And uh, the creepiness, the immersion into that kind of cold Russian kind of setting was, it just blew people's minds. And that's why I think with your new Namelsk, it's gonna, it's gonna be big. Indeed. Like, I, I, like, always like to recreate the proper atmosphere in the mission like the namask itself has a proper campaign in arma 2 I, like i try to add a lot of atmosphere like different ambience music and stuff like that so yeah i guess it it got carried over to the daisy mode version too well it's definitely definitely ambient that's for sure but yeah, the, the map, map itself quite lacked the detail and well, like, there was a lot of nonsense there, but I tried my best to upgrade it for standalone. It's still kind of nonsense, but less nonsense. May, it may be nonsense to you, but I bet okay, people will love it. Question number four. How is Namelsk profiting from the new Daisy text, engine sound, etc.? Oh, yeah. A lot. <laughs> like I talked about the sound. Uh, we talked about the sound already in Daisy, and uh, Namals is benefiting from that a lot. Like those custom sounds on objects. But yeah, also like the improvement to the overall like ambience. So yeah, and of course all the other stuff from Enfusion. It's awesome from the render. Like you get better performance visual visuals and it's really benefiting a lot if you compare it to arma 2 you can like compare it if you've seen the footage 
Yeah, I would love to compare it. I would love to. Uh, I have actually had people say to go back to Arma 2. Okay, question number five is pretty much answered as well about ambient sound. Um, so yeah, definitely going to be an improvement for ambient sound from the mod uh, Arma 2 Namelsk. Uh, question number six, are you satisfied with how the base game treats cold? Or how standalone was going to treat, treat cold when you're in the snow? Hmm, yeah, I have a, I'm planning to change this side of things a lot for Namaus because it's still a like completely different environment than Chernarov's. But yeah, I am. I would say I'm quite satisfied how the, like, the base game on Chernarov's trees the cold. Even though it's kind of still working progress with 6.3, because like things changed a lot compared to the 6.2. So guys are not exactly settled how this will behave yet, but it will be soon decided. Right, number seven, this will be an interesting one. Will we also see wolves or maybe any other predators, if that was something you'd wanted to do on the Milsk? Oh yeah, you will see wolves around the high military areas, <laughs> high tier <laughs> military areas for sure. And yeah, I would like to see other predators, maybe bears. We'll see. <laughs> so no bloodsuckers then. That wasn't was uh, that an addition of yours. <laughs> that wasn't an addition. Yeah, of yours. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was yours. Yeah, the bloodsuckers were in the Arma 2 campaign. Yeah, because I, I wasn't and sure because it wasn't in the first version I played. Then I played again, and suddenly there was bloodsuckers creeping up on me, and it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I just see yeah, these so footsteps coming at me in the snow, and I was like, "What's that?" And then see the red eyes, and I screamed and ran. <laughs> yeah, that was fun to watch the videos <laughs> and the <laughs> yeah. reactions. But yeah, like the Bloodsucker was done in the Arma 2 mod, basically the campaign. And so yeah, it was working, so it was quite easy to implement into the Daisy mode version. But yeah, I'm not planning to revive this idea. Somebody might though, with or modern stand maybe. On. Yeah, maybe. I was like, I want to focus on different things with the standalone version. Okay, next one. Not sure if we've probably already touched on it a bit. How much has the Namelsk, evol Namelsk map evolved since its Daisy mod version? I mean, we know sound-wise it's going to have evolved quite a lot. Um, but what about structure? Any changes to the map itself? It evolved visually a lot. Like this completely changed and new satellite texture much more detailed so you see a lot more details on the mountains you can see it in the like this video <coughs> already like you can see like all those details on the mountains like terrain changed a lot too like there are no longer like these no noisy details there there is actually quite those terrain details that are in the standalone version actually quite make sense. So visually a lot, like it's much more believable now than it was in Arma 2. But yeah, a lot more new objects and redesigned old areas. So yeah. new towns, new city changed like slightly at least anyway. Um, like the work with the town, basically what I did with it was I, d I removed it completely and did it again. Oh, okay. And yeah, there are a lot of more, like, I felt like the Arma 2 version is too empty, so I added a lot of more stuff, like, in between the important areas. Okay, so you'd have cover and things like that and a lot more things to look at and... Oh, well, I mean, like, uh... In bigger scale, like new areas, like new, oh, whole new industrial areas. size ah. and stuff like that. Or some of the old ones were extended too. Like, you you can see it a bit in the teaser video, but I try to not to show too yeah, much. Yeah, not to give away too much. Yeah, definitely. Let the uh, players explore. Yep. Okay, next one um, is about the bunkers, because we know the bunker, is it object Object A1? The, the underground bunker? It's actually A2. A2, that's the one. Been so long since I played. A very very important part of the mouse map. Uh, are they, uh, is it still in? And did you have to make any changes? Oh, yes. It's still in. Oh. There are actually 
three uh, underground objects now, three different sites with the underground, and uh, there is also another underground structure that I will not be talking about too much, oh, but no. you will see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Uh, A2 was so, so many memories of A2. So A2 was like, I guess, another example of the nonsense that I created in Arma 2. I tried to fix that in standalone version, so what I did was to... I basically removed it completely and did it again. <laughs> So it's, it's a lot more smooth and, and easier to I, access. I think things. it's like no biggest underground object you have ever seen in Arma map, basically. Oh, that's, okay. that's, that's like, awesome. I'm like still mentioning Namalska's Arma map because it's still the style, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this is not exactly Arma, but it's still in the style and it's using the same principles and yeah. like tools. So yeah, that that underground changed completely. It's so big, and you really can get lost in there. <laughs> so was this part with uh, what infusions allowed you to do that you couldn't do in armor? In armor, uh, not exactly. It, you, it, I'm using the same basic methods I would use in armor. Like yeah, you've just learned a lot more. Nothing really and changed in infusion regards this. Like we have some like easier methods of hiding the big hole with the objects like we can now actually create grass models that we can put on the on top of the like artificial grass models or something like that so there are better ways to hide these underground objects now but yeah it was mainly it was basically me like deciding okay i will invest several weeks to basically model completely new underground and yeah that I think it turned out really good, hopefully. And it's still going to be a, a high loot area? High risk, okay. high loot? I, oh I my will... god. It's going to be so good. I, they do have, like, I think it's five or actually six floors there. So what? it will be like scaled. <laughs> what? You, it was like you two have, floors. Like, on on floor. each floor, you have like map where you can actually go. So. <laughs> oh my god. I like, should help you a little bit, but yeah. Oh, that is mad. I got inspired there by Black Mesa, like the Lambda oh, reactor. Yeah. So yeah, it will be really interesting. And oh. yeah, there will be some IT route, hopefully. Oh, if that doesn't get people excited, I don't know what will. And yeah, there are like all the two smaller undergrounds are kind of cool. And yeah, there is also the fourth one. I will not be talking about it. Oh, exciting stuff. Okay, question number 10. Would the infusion particle system allow for special effects on the Milsk? Oh yeah, I, I guess this ties also to Chernars. Like, we would like to have more particles in the game world. Uh, for Namos especially, I would currently experimenting was experimenting with uh, snow like blowing over the mountain ridges so you can actually see like on the mask there's a lot of wind so you would see the snow blowing over the ridges mountain yeah. ridges so we yeah, are experimenting with that how basically tie a particle system to the map object and we would definitely like to use it on Chernarus too like for example, for those streams, but not just that, like fallen leaves and all those other details, or even local fog under like ponds or in the forest somewhere. There's like a lot of school stuff we could add to the environment. We just gotta wait and see, see how it turns out. Yep. Okay, next question is pretty much we've answered already about Namask's landscape. Um, well, actually, I guess, um, is it any bigger than the original? Have you not changed the actual land mass? It's the same. Just huh? the, uh, the actual contents of Namask. Kinda, kinda, it is kinda bigger. Like, I mentioned that I focused a lot on, on improving the existing areas and adding, like, more areas in between so it's not that boring and you have, like, 
more places to hide your stuff I guess because I also changed the nature like the forests there uh, there are some like new locations around a bit like you can have like new small islands really small islands so it is a bit bigger than the original Arma 2 version but yeah I guess it depends how you look at it because there is also something in the sea which kind of makes it a lot bigger but it's hard to say if you consider it as land land of like the part of Namask <laughs> you will see oh is this something else you can't talk about like I will let you guess what it could be <laughs> uh, under the sea Ah, not under the sea. On like, top of the sea. Oh, an yeah. oil rig. Uh, For a ship or maybe. something like that. <laughs> you will see, like, it's kind of thing that extends the playable area a lot, but it's, like, questionable if you consider it to be part of the map. <laughs> oh, man, I can't think what that could be. You will see. Uh, uh, we'll all see. We'll all see. Oh. Do you plan on making any more original maps for Daisy? Yeah, well, I have a lot of ideas floating in my head. It's just like <laughs> creating a map and like really original, uniquely looking, uniquely looking map is really hard and time consuming. So we'll have to see. I can't promise anything right now. Oh, well, people are going to be uh, spending a lot of time in, in the mail when it when it comes. So. I think they'll have plenty of time to wait yeah, using that. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, plan to support Namask for a long, longer period of time. I will not abandon it after the release. Like, I have some stuff already planned to like, release later than the initial release. So yeah, uh, I will definitely support Namask. But if I will actually decide to create another map, that's kind of hard. <laughs> decision because it really takes a lot of time yeah i suppose are you doing the mouse on the side like outside of normal work with generous yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so you'd have normal generous work with uh, daisy you'd have the mouse continued work and support and then your original map so you'd have like no free time yeah <laughs> yeah and then i also have different other projects so we'll yeah. see like <laughs> gonna be busy like I mentioned in boy this interview, I would like to have like I would like to try to create like some Middle East environment, possibly mixed with the like Soviet architecture. I go back I think something kinda of looking similar to the dying light environment. Oh I yeah, think yeah. It could, it could look interesting and it would be something different for Daisy. But then again it like it costs quite a lot of time yeah but luckily for this environment we still have arma 2 arrowhead objects so maybe uh, we'll see <laughs> yeah, another thing we'll have to look forward to okay moving on to can you tell us anything more about the modding and map making tools will we be able to do things that we have never done before or port old maps across easy kind of thing where a lot of people are worried whether um it will make it hard to port over old maps like uh Taviana, I guess. Yeah, so about the mob, mob tools uh, or modding tools in general, like you have like two sides, I guess. You have one that's like the RV for the RV part of Daisy, and then you have the tools for infusion part of Daisy. Like the Daisy isn't completely infusion and probably will never be completely infusion, so we will still rely on some RV tools like terrain builder and object builder and infusion just adds the infusion sprinkles yeah, the, yeah. the improvements you have the animation editor you have the scape editor and editor for interface graphical interface and all the other tools but then you have the model editor that's object builder from basically like arma free tools and terrain builder which is also from arma free tools so yeah this will, if you are interested in making a new map, it's the process is really similar to the Arma 3 like workflow. So 
So it'd be good for me to <laughs> practice now then on Armour 3. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely try that. Because I've, I've never import, tried. <laughs> learning <laughs> curve is quite steep, but yeah. like, it's it's really rewarding to create maps for Arma games in general. And yeah. even more for Daisy, because like people spend a lot of time in the environment. And it's not just not like for one mission or something, but people basically go through everything <laughs> on the map. So it's it's really rewarding to create maps for Arma games in general. Uh, you mentioned Taviana. That's uh, like any Arma map. Like if you have the source files, it should, it should be possible to port it without any significant issues. Of course, there's like there are a lot of steps involved in like making sure models work. You have the ladders working on the models and doors. Yeah, I remember that happening with the Arma 2 to Arma 3 porting. There's a lot of issues yeah, yeah, there week. The maps is, isn't it shouldn't be that hard to port them. Like the it should be on similar level of like transition from Arma 1 to Arma 2 or Arma 2 to Arma 3 basically. Okay, cool. So it won't be too long before we start seeing all the maps that the community have created coming over to Daisy. Yeah, now. like I'm not sure if you see Taviana because like they have their own game right now. So. Yeah, yeah, Taviana. Yeah, I, I did know that they've got their own thing and it might not come over, but um, there was quite a few other good maps though. So, oh yeah, right. And hopefully there will be even like the completely new maps. Oh the yeah, standalone. Uh, the original maps will be the most interesting ones. So that we have a lot of objects in the data, and so like I, I just cannot wait what people will be able to create with them. I, I know somebody who makes uh, who is making an armor three map, so I might uh, might try and learn a bit from him and and uh, maybe work together on a, on a Daisy map with the tools because he knows more about it than me. So we'll have a little play and see what we can come up with. Yeah, you can basically learn the stuff now and be ready when the Daisy modding hits. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. So anybody out there who wants to do modding for Daisy, probably start learning now on armor three tools, and then you'll pretty much be there. Yep. Okay, final question. Of course, a question everyone wants to hear. Can you tell us when we might see or play Nemelsk? <laughs> we will see. Like, you know, like we've already mentioned, like I'm working on Nemelsk in my free time, so it really depends how busy am I in the work. So, of course, like the six free and the Chernaro says the priority for me right now. So, I would like to see Nemelsk as soon as possible so it means like sometimes around the modding release of course but we'll see like there are like other priorities for me and like i of course want to release it in in good shape i don't want to rush anything and like i want to have all the important parts of the like the, like the survival parts in the first release so it's really hard for everyone to survive there. We'll see. Like, I can give you really any date, but as soon as possible. No, no, yeah. Hopefully not long into 6.3 or beta. Hopefully we get to see uh, get to see your work in all its glory. But uh, yeah, some really good information though. Uh, many of us loved Namelsk. We have a lot of fond memories and stories to tell. I've got loads. Well, I've still got quite a few videos of Namelsk actually. I've got some at Object A2, which were really tense and fun. And I want I want those memories back. And from what we've heard, we can have some amazing adventures on uh, improved Namelsk for for Daisy. So, really looking forward to sharing many more memories with Namelsk for Daisy standalone. And uh, thank you, Adam, for joining me for a quick talk about map design and Namelsk and Daisy and Generous in general. And we'll all look forward to seeing your work in the future. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.